And what's up, guys? Welcome to the Police State. This is a uh, a new game called Orwell. It came out a couple of weeks ago, um, and it was released as a serial. Uh, so I believe the last episode came out uh, last week. I got to play through every episode, and it's uh, it's been a very enjoyable game. Uh, so, as far as plot goes, or the point of this game, I think, is it's about the ethics of uh, being an investigator and using like a mass surveillance system that can spy on people and take all their personal information and metadata and store it in this kind of um, surveillance system uh, permanently without any hope of that information uh, being removed from that system. So it brings up issues of privacy and, and uh, all of that stuff. So uh, we're watching uh, CVT footage, whatever you call it, those cameras. This is... Uh, Surveillance footage from a place called the Freedom Plaza. And I, I gotta say I'm kind of annoyed because I did already try to film this. But I don't know what happened. I think my recorder just decided it didn't want to work. Uh, so here I am again doing this uh, for the second time. That's okay, because I, I love this game, I gotta be honest. So, uh, we found a blue-haired hipster with a police record, uh, so she looks kind of suspect, I guess. And, uh, look, there's a lovely couple sitting there just kissing and hugging. And then they died. All right, so that's uh, that's our introduction into uh, Orwell. I think that's the end of the episode. So thank you guys for watching. And no, I'm joking. Uh, yeah, my my uh, computer for some reason has problems with the loading screens in this game. So they might take a little bit longer than normal, but don't worry, it's, it's coming up. And uh, this is our good buddy Symes, he's our advisor. And uh, our application was successful, so we're going to be an investigator that gets to use Orwell for the first time. And uh, since we're just starting out, we're just uh, getting a feel for the system and how it works. And uh, we're gonna just look through some uh, some news stories, get a get a sense of what's going on in this uh, this world called the nation. And uh, I, I'm not going to read out loud uh, all that information. If you guys want to, uh, if you guys want to understand what's going on, you guys can just pause the video over the text and just uh, read through it. That's less painful for both of us because uh, you know I don't have a great voice for uh, for commenting or narrating stuff. Uh, here, here's our parody of uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. It's always fun. Anyway, forget about that stuff. We gotta, uh, we gotta look at this uh, target person. 
Cassandra Watergate. And as uh, Symes is explaining, uh, the way that Orwell works, the way that the system works, is we enter data chunks uh, from uh, material online, in this situation, uh, Rust records, and we upload it to Orwell, and it stays permanently in that system. So uh, you better make sure that whatever you're putting into Orwell is accurate information. Because people's lives are at stake uh, in this game based on what you actually input into Orwell. As we'll see later on. So we're just going through the uh, various documents and information we find. <coughs> it seems that our uh, target person, uh, Cassandra Watergate, has been suspected of ter terrorist behavior before at the same location that the bomb went off. Uh, she was part of a protest at the Freedom Plaza. Sorry, so... Uh, her occupation is an artist, and that gave us uh, a new document. I don't know how this stuff works, but we seem to, up t we seem to input information to Orwell and I guess Orwell searches the entirety of the internet to find related uh, related documents. That's what I assume is happening here. So we're gonna spy on Cassandra's media webpage, I guess. And uh, make sure you don't take useless information, like the idea that she's living in a wonderland behind a rainbow. It's not really uh, pertinent to uh, criminal investigation. I mean, you could put it up, you could put it in there for giggles, but uh, it doesn't really. Uh, what's the word? It doesn't really advance the plot, so it's kind of a waste of your time. So here we are creeping through a, uh, a young woman's uh, a media blog, taking information about her uh, her parents, her uh, her job. Uh, okay, so we're not going to take her relationship status. I guess that's where we draw the line. And uh, we also grabbed her Utel account, which I believe is like their MSN messenger. Oh god, I'm dating myself. Uh, their Skype. Yes, their Skype. So uh, we're gonna go through her Skype chat record now. Just look for more information. And that data chunk, uh, I there's actually a uh, an achievement based on uh, not getting that data chunk. So leave that, if you want the achievement, um, I forget what it's called, don't take that data chunk. But the information on uh, Joseph Langley, her lawyer, could be useful, so we're gonna grab that. As you've seen, as you see now in the relationships, uh, Joseph Langley is attached to Cassandra Watergate, so he's not a target person, but his information's now been uploaded, uploaded into Orwell. He becomes connected to the investigation. If we get to a point where Joseph Langley uh, becomes a more suspicious target, then he might become a targeted person, and then we could upload information about him into Orwell. 
And that kind of stuff you'll see happen later on. So what's actually going on right now? So we are investigating... Uh, we are investigating the case uh, regarding uh, Cassandra's involvement in assaulting a police officer. And we are trying to determine uh, how the acquittal happened. Was it due to a lack of evidence? Or was it because of her wealthy family's uh, connections? So you have two conflicting uh, data chunks and you can only you can only pick one so we're gonna look at the other information we have available to us and uh, determine or make our judgment based on that information so we know that she's the daughter of a, a pharmaceutical entrepreneur and we found uh, we found the company that she worked for so now we're looking for information uh, about her her previous job or about her family this way we can determine uh, what really happened in that case that led to her acquittal so Cassie is a uh, junior COO And uh, I'm gonna pick that photo of her too, just because it's uh, cause I like it better. It's not really <laughs> an ethical reason for uh, uploading people's uh, images into a mass surveillance system, but uh, this is also a game, so... I hope they don't do that in real life. Uh, obvious, well... I, I don't know if they have a master villain system as uh, as elaborate as this in real life, but uh, yeah, I, I hope the investigators in real life they would be using a system like this are more ethical than I am. Anyway, right, we're we're gathering uh, some more information about uh, her her career. Uh, we're also checking other sources of information, learning about what's going on in the world through the National Beholder. Uh, this this woman, Miss Stella Delcroix, I don't know how to say her name properly. Uh, she's the Minister of Safety, and she invented the uh, safety bill. Uh, it's it's pretty much like the uh, the Patriot Act or like the. Um, Bill C-51 for Canadians. It enhances the uh, the ability of intelligence agencies, expands their powers to spy on citizens in order to crack down on, on criminals and terrorists. So we're going to go with the idea, because we can't find any evidence uh, to the contrary, that the uh, Cassandra's case was closed due to lack of evidence. There's no reason to believe otherwise. And now we're going to look more into Cassandra's past. So we're going to take information about her uh, her date of birth. Uh, in case that becomes useful somehow. Uh, spoilers that never really did. And we can also see uh, Cassie's position uh, when it comes to the government. She has a very strong political viewpoint. So we're going to take that down. <coughs> it's also probably important to note that uh, Cassandra's in a relationship with her lawyer.
which I find to be a little bit suspect. Oh, and also obviously some of these data chunks aren't essential to uh, furthering the plot, uh, while others are. Like, um, this yellow data chunk about Mary, Cassandra's apparent best friend, not very useful. Uh, but aliases, aliases are useful. And uh, invitations to political activist groups, those are also probably useful. So I think we got all we can from uh, in Cassandra's timeline, her blog post or whatever. Now we're gonna go, uh, I think, spy on her uh, her Skype account. I'm just disabling any uh, data chunks that uh, we don't need. So uh, you guys might have noticed there's no clicking in the background, and that's not because I fixed my microphone, that's because this is pre-recorded. Uh, I don't really know what to do to get rid of that annoying clicking sound just yet. I, I gotta talk to someone that actually knows what they're doing with this stuff. Uh, but I decided to pre-record this so you guys didn't have to be tormented by that clicking sound uh, that comes up in my recordings. Which is me either like rapidly tapping the keyboard or clicking the mouse or you know, whatever. Oh, man, I'm killing the atmosphere here. So anyway, so... Uh, there's this man, slash woman, called Goldfels, and uh, he, he or she accepted Cassandra to thought, so that's probably uh, important information. I know not much is going on right now, but that's because we're building up the case from the ground up. As we move on and progress in the case, you're going to see uh, this game does get more intense. It's got some very good atmosphere. But at the moment, we're just trying to figure out uh, piece by piece what is happening with our target suspect, Cassandra. Um, is she actually involved in this terrorist attack? Uh, what was she doing at the Freedom Plaza? And uh, can we learn anything from her? And uh, we're uploading a data chunk about Methurin. And uh, I can't remember what I can't remember what Methurin is, so we're gonna have to look that up. Okay, so it's, uh, it's an antidepressant. So, uh, so Symes is making a lot of assumptions that this woman is uh, mentally unstable and the only thing that's keeping her stable is uh, her antidepressants. Uh, we're gonna just go through uh, this uh, this activist blog called Thought, and there's Cassandra. So 
she seems to have written an article uh, claiming that the protest was peaceful at the uh, Freedom Plaza. Uh, but there are two sides to every story, including your own story. And take a look at this. Uh, she justifies assaults uh, for showing the futility of uh, the surveillance state. So she's got two contrary opinions here. Which one does she really believe? Um, I'm going to assume, because I have no other reason to, that this is her actual opinion. Going back into her, uh, her data, her Skype chat. And uh, I might, uh, as these chats are going on, I might be like skimming through their profile. Uh, that's because I didn't know that you could actually go to the reader and keep collecting information while the chat is going on. I thought you had to stay in the chat for it to continue, but you actually don't need to be in the chat. But, uh,. I guess I was really paying attention here and just reading what was going on here. So, this music is very atmospheric for the situation. And there you go. So, we have, uh, Two conflicting opinions on the same issue. But we do have a confession out of Cassandra uh, that she did assault the officer. The question is did she do it to protect uh, Juliet or did she do it to. did she do it out of anger? And we're gonna take Cassandra's uh, position. So obviously we know what's happening here, happening here but uh, Juliet has no idea. And, uh, and Syme seems to be happy about all this. So I guess we did okay. Uh, or not. This is an explosion at Stellington University with the same M.O. as the, uh, the attack on the Freedom Plaza. So, obviously it couldn't have been Cassandra. Um, but then that leaves the question as to who this was. So 
so that that mystery now is is there. Who who actually was responsible for these bombings? Uh, was it Cassandra, or was it someone else? Uh, we're not gonna find out uh, today, but we're gonna probably find out in another episode. So we're just gonna log out of our computer and see what we actually discovered today. So we discovered the uh, activist group thought. A uh, second assault happened. There was uh, the original assault on the Freedom Plaza. And you can go through the list of things we, we learned about our target person, Cassandra Watergate. But uh, I think we're done here, so uh, until another time, guys, uh, I'll see you later. And uh, I hope you enjoy Orwell. Uh, take care.